Hello, I'm Steve Stewart, I'm the founder and consultant of Vrick Consulting, and this is Wikipedia, your guide to children's services recruitment and retention. Um, chapter nine is on the DFE workforce uh, survey return census or whatever for the year up to September 2022, which is released in February 2023. Uh, and section up, subsection two is on regional um, aspects of that. And this is a series of regional snapshots as to the situation they're using data from the DfE and also my extrapolated data from that. And this is on Inner London. There will be further dots after that. I don't know what they are because basically um, I was going to do all of the data crunching to start with and then I was going to do all of the recording. But the fact is that the situations are so different and they're so nuanced is that I was thinking... I'm going to forget about this. <laughs> I'm going to forget the points that I need to make when I come to the recording. So I've started doing them as I go along, but that means that the organisation of it might change. Okay, so where are we? In a London. Okay, now this is, a, again, very interesting set of data. I love this stuff. I love this. It's what I live for. Well, not what I live for, but you know, it's a, I do enjoy this. So what we've got here is... A remarkably stable set of figures. Um, for the DFE, one of the first things that I look for is your vacancy rate and whether that's going up and down. So I increase it here and you actually see that your vacancy rate actually across the last three years is remarkably stable. Um, you were doing remarkably well uh, in terms of recruiting more people than you were losing um, you know, at that kind of stage. Also, what we've got here is in terms of your, uh, what I also look for is what I call your overall shortfall. And your overall shortfall is the um, number of vacancies minus the number of agency staff. So that actually says is that have you got enough workers in the region, you know, overall, uh, or have you got access to as many workers as you need? And in actual fact here is that, yeah, you, although, although you have got a shortfall, it's not massive and in actual fact here what you'll find is that you did have an oversupply of very close age stuff which i would suggest is actually part of your mitigating factors in reducing your vacancy increase across other areas that may have been seen and that's despite the fact that your number of social workers is going up although you did have a detraction rate there and your leavers rate is going up slightly okay so i just went straight onto your kind of targets therefore because it's actually quite an exciting set of figures, and we'll come up to the reasons why in terms of what you can do in, in a little bit. But in terms of um, your appointments to be made in 2023, there's no getting away from the fact that these um, figures in terms of vacancies, they are high. They are really high. You know, is that you've got 845 vacancies compared to, from, you know, that, you know, you're looking at a vacancy rate of 25%, and that is really high yeah the fact is that it's mitigated by these agency staff and the number of agency staff is you know it's really quite it's almost impressive but you know it's a it, it is an issue so this means two things first of all your appointments to be made in 2023 is a really high figure because your appointments to be made is how many people you need to appoint to move your vacancy rate to zero you know, to be fully staffed. And what that figure is made up of is your number of vacancies, plus your number of levers, plus any increase in establishment that you'd have. And just taking last year's figures is that you've got your vacancy rate of 800, 845, you've got your levers of 441, and then you've got your establishment. And that comes out with a figure of 1,286.8. Okay, that's a really, really big figure, which is equivalent of half. Yeah, so where you would have two chairs filled with permanent staff, yeah, you need to move that to having three chairs filled. Gosh, yeah, so that's a lot. Now, is that realistic? No, not really. But what is more realistic is what we'd, you'd want everyone to try and achieve across the country is what I call your minimum shared requirement, okay? And your minimum shared requirement is your number of levers plus your proportion of that shortfall. Uh, because your because your shortfall figure is actually quite low, yeah, is here is that you've got a situation where your minimum shared requirement is also relatively low, and that is makes it a lot more achievable. Now, what that actually seeks to achieve then is that creates a market conditions across the country, which would lead 
to a reduction in temporary staff and an increase in permanent staff because it stops the fuel for that particular market. And that's what I'm going to come on to now when I talk about what are your aims and objectives for the next 12 months and what kind of strategies will they employ. Now, as I mentioned before, is that although your vacancy rates are really, really high, there's great potential for energised action here. There, you know, it's, it's, it's significant, the work that you could do with potential great rewards. Now, what I haven't mentioned elsewhere is that really here is you're dependent as well on a really, really effective MOU operation. I know that you've now got the new London Protocol or whatever it's called, London Pledge, but the effective management of that MOU may have significant benefits across your entire workforce strategy. However, similarly, when it comes to that agency staff usage, because it is so high already, and because you've got so many vacancies, is that you wonder what flexibility there is still is in that reply. So you need further contingency plans to avoid any vulnerabilities as that situation suggests. What is your plan B? Yeah, get yourself a plan B because the potential, just the great potential for energised action, there's great potential for it all to go and blow up really quickly. Um, and yes, I know about the DFE plans and you actually, that puts you at risk than anyone else. So you need the source data as well. Um, is that entry interviews and greater demographics. I'd love to know where you get your workers from, from permanent employment, and I'd love to know how long they stay with you and things like that. So you need greater source info as to where you're getting workers from. The geographic pool of potentially working in London is massive, particularly among a younger base, but how long is that sustainable for? Uh, now, here's the thing. I try and make a judgment as to whether every region, as well as I've been going through this, is a net contributor or detractor from national workforce stability. Now, presently, you are a very, very minor detractor, but I would say that you've got the potential to be a contributor very quickly and very easily. Well, not very easily, but it's going to need concerted effort, but there is the potential for you to become a significant contributor to national workforce stability. How do we take this forward? If you want to have a further conversation, how do you engage? Well, Wikipedia is the resource that this is part of, which is free to access and use. Um, and if you want to follow updates on that, you can follow it on Twitter so that you get those things coming through. If you want to follow me uh, or speak to me, it's at Future Social Steve, Foot Sock Steve. Future Social was an innovation project by the DFE that I was working on. Uh, and if you want to read my reviews, they were great. Uh, <laughs> web address for the consultancy that I work for is rick.consulting. And you can email me there at steve at rick.consulting. Yes, we'd like to have a conversation with you. Um, but if you've just got this far and you want to do anything or you want to follow, please like, subscribe and comment wherever you can, because it does give me that little buzz to know that someone out there is reading it and appreciates it if they do. OK, many thanks. Um, but if I don't speak to you before, take care. Good luck. But I do have to speak to you soon. Bye-bye.